Hey there, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan. We're looking at a Toyota Chaser JZX100. This one here bought from auction. We're going to be sending it over to the USA. This is going to be a post-purchase inspection video where we'll look over the condition of the car. This one here has 104,000 kilometers on it. It's a 2-liter engine with the automatic transmission. This is as cheap as they come. Now the person who bought this one said that they intended to do a 2JZ engine swap. They actually told us to write a little note on here to mention this on the video with the R154 transmission. By the sounds of it, this person already has that engine and transmission and just needed something to swap it into. And so, chasers, at the moment, these are expensive. These are the holy grail of Japanese sports cars. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. As far as drifting goes, this is probably the best chassis. You have the reliability of the Toyota inline six cylinder engines, the long wheelbase, they come in manual transmissions, and then the 1JZ engine comes original in these, in the Tour V version, this is the Avante version. Uh, and then that puts out 280 horsepower and is known for a lot more horsepower if you wanted to tune it, as well as being reliable when it has that lot more horsepower. But they're also 20,000, in some cases $30,000 for a good one. And they're kind of not really legal yet. This one here is a November of 1996, and so we're going to be sending it there um, now. This is the first month that these were available. Or maybe, oh, they might have been available since August or September. I'm not sure, but these are just, just barely uh, available for import to the USA. People want them. Prices for the turbo ones are insane. You can get them for cheaper if you want to go for the uh, the lesser engine and the lesser transmission. Automatics are a third the price of the manuals. And then if you go for the non-turbo two liter economy engine, then you get exactly that economy with less price. Now we'll take a look at the condition of this car. Uh, overall, engine wise, mechanical wise, interior wise, it's all good. Exterior needs a full repaint. And I'll show you why in a second here. Just gonna close this. I will say that the coolant and the oil both look okay. Tires on it are 2019 and so very nice. Weird to see uh, such a modern car with a distributor still. Nowadays everything has, is running on electronic in, uh, ignition but uh, the distributor, in case you don't know, so it runs off of a gear next to the camshaft here. When the camshaft is inside here spinning it spins this and inside has a contact with little metal contacts on the outside of this. And as it spins with the engine, it makes a connection between the metal contact and the end of that uh, spinning pin. The electricity comes from the one coil here into there and then splits it at the time that it's supposed to spark inside the engine. Something else that's kind of fun to look at is uh, how narrow the engine is here in the top. This is an F head. Toyota has G heads and F heads for their engines. And uh, the F1 is for fuel economy. It has a narrower camshafts in order to slow down the air inside the, um, the engine with a tighter corner, which gives you higher torque, probably uh, lower power though. And then better fuel economy, I guess. I'm no engineer, so that's a simple understanding of it, I guess. Oh, and look at this parking pole. Who doesn't want a parking pole? The answer is nobody. That electronically goes up and down. I did check it. It does work. Just gonna switch the engine off here so that we can look at the rest of the car without it destroying the environment. Oh, and while we're here, have a look at the gauge set. Okay, so now while the rest of the world were driving around in Camrys, which are good cars, Japan got the rear wheel drive. Oh, is that ours? Oh, weird. I guess we're getting a car that they didn't call us about. <laughs> hmm. Anyways, Japan got the rear wheel drive, kind of Camry size vehicle, but these are fantastic. They have double wishbones in the front and the rear, and good double wishbones. If you take a look in here, you get a lot of articulation. I don't know if you can see that, but the strut tops go way up there to give you the maximum amount of uh, good driving pleasure. It does make a difference. It makes the car feel uh, smaller than it actually is. And this is a mid-sized car. It's kind of in between a 3 Series and a 5 Series in terms of size. Okay, 1996 Chaser RA. Interior grade B, exterior grade E. Mileage on this is 104,886 kilometers. 2 liter gasoline engine. This is a GX100. The JZX100 is the one that comes with the 1JZ engine. G is the engine code. 
X is the chassis code and 100 is the series. And so an X90 would be the generation before this. This one's 100, the next generation is a 110. Konnichiwa. I'm actually gonna close the video off here and pick it up after I'm done accepting that car. So just give me a sec here. And I'm back. Okay, so let's have a look over the inspection sheet here. So 1996 Chaser, did I already say that? Yes, I did. Okay, so airbag, alloy wheels, power steering, power windows. Okay, the seller didn't say any sales points or notes on here, so just into the report section here from the auction inspector. It says rocker panel has machining marks on it. Now this is an RA grade and exterior E, interior B. So good interior, bad exterior. RA means it's been in an accident. It's a mild accident that it's been in. They say it has marks on the side sill machining, so that's basically a how they repair it. So the side sill had some damage and the right rear inner panel. So down here and down here, light damage. None of the damage you can actually see from the exterior and all panel gaps, including the door here, the trunk here, and this line all line up perfectly. Looking at it like this, you can't tell. And a small accident as in three miles per hour to seven miles per hour, somewhere in there. Um, maybe even less, actually. Okay, so interior, uh, just continuing here, interior dirty, side mirror paint peeling, it's really bad. In fact, the whole car is peeling really badly. I don't even know how it gets that bad. Um, I suspect it was parked next to a mirrored wall or something like that, because I've never seen anything like this. Uh, molding scratched, exterior small scratch marks, suspension area rust. Now I looked for this and I couldn't find any of it except for maybe what you might call some surface rust on the upper control arm on the right side, but usually they don't consider that to be suspension area rust because it's made out of such a heavy duty piece of metal that it'll last 200 years. Okay, so dashboard glue marks on it. You can see that right through. There's that. There's also a piece of tape here. Now, this is a problem with a lot of Toyotas, in particular the JZX ones. The dashboard next to the vent here starts to creep up, and you can see it through the windshield. There's a piece of tape on there that looks like it was installed to kind of prevent that from happening or to glue it back down into place. Okay, uh, right side mirror, electric folding doesn't work. That's true, I did test that. And then airbag lamp is on, and that is also true. Looking at the body here, we have P3, 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 P2, P2, P3, P3, P2. P3 is uh, heavy, like top level paint peeling. P2 is mid-level paint peeling. You really need to paint the whole car. Uh, just to give you an idea here, take a look here. You can see clearly there's no more clear coat here at all. And then there's clear coat there. Um, same thing goes with the hood. Same thing goes with the roof. You can see the line is right here, the mirror, the top of the door, and it's really crusty. Look, as I zoom in, you can see the cracks in the paint. And that goes with everywhere on the car. See here? And the entire trunk on the top of the bumper. And the front bumper, even the... Uh, the white paint has burnt through, and so you can see some of the uh, black urethane underneath, or whatever plasticky material that they use. And if you touch it, you get some of the paint on you because it's cracking off like that. I've seen heavy peeling of paint, but never so defined. It's like the car never left the parking spot. Hmm. Okay, so that's everything on the sheet here. We'll do a walk around. There is, oh, one area of damage. It's a, uh, other than the paint, a U3 here on the left front door. That is right here from about here to here. It's about eight to 10 inches or so. And just have a close look at that. So you can see it at the corner there. And you can see it down further below. The top dent is sharp, the other one's are light. But when you repaint it, stuff like that will get fixed for you. The rest of the car is looking spick and span in terms of dents, so nothing to worry about. Oh, and these headlights, I remember first time I saw them thinking how B how much BMW it looked like, but nowadays I, you know, I like a BMW, but these chasers just look so good to me. And maybe it's because I have such a good feeling about them. Every one that I drive feels great. Uh, Grant and I, Grant the new guy, drove this, 
And uh, he drove it. I didn't. I just sat as a passenger. Because uh, he's he was considering one of these for his own car. And uh, so we asked the owner, who is also watching this, thank you for letting us drive it. The suspension needs to be replaced. Get a set of coilovers. These cars look awesome on 18-inch wheels. And it'll really change the look of the car. It's the suspension uh, shocks. All four of them. Other than that, everything is good. Steering was good. Um, well, I mean, I sat through the passenger seat, but yeah, I think it's pretty easy to, to tell these things. Engine was nice. It is slow. It's um, 140 horsepower for the 2-liter inline 6-cylinder, but it's nice and smooth. It's not like a 2-liter 4-cylinder. It's not as buzzy or vibrating. And um, it does feel really unique. Now the reason why they have two liter six cylinders here is a is an image thing. Here in Japan, you have to pay more taxes if you have uh, anything over a two liter. So some people would, like manufacturers and many buyers, would stay with two liters in order to make sure that they got enough sales out of the models that they were selling, or at least they'd have a model like in this case that is a two liter, in case somebody wanted the car but then couldn't, didn't want to pay for the taxes of the higher amount. Um, the difference is about three hundred dollars a year in taxes. So it's, you know, for some people it's no problem, but for other people, you know, maybe they can only afford the car if they go with the cheaper one. Also, look at this. That's an old person's mark. Like, uh, if you're over 70, um, it's recommended you have that. If you're over 75, you have to have it. Cracks in the paint there. Okay, not really much to say about the exterior because I've already said it. So, um, oh, tires, I said already 2019. They're Yokohama Ecos uh, Blue Earth. And then the wheels are kind of bad. So get that set of 18-inch wheels. You know what's cool about this? Original suspension, original exhaust, original everything. You really don't find these as originals. Very common to find these with big wheels, rolled fenders in here, which you can't roll back a fender once it's rolled. And so the chassis are really running out. It's like... You know, 25 years old, common drift car, common to modify. This is like, uh, kind of like the same level as an EK9, um, in terms of how much enthusiasts like these cars. Maybe even GTR if it was a stretch. And I would say that this car probably has a bigger following here in Japan than the Mark IV Supra. I could be, you know, maybe a little bit off on that, but these are a much more common sight to see on the street than that at least. Okay, so power windows. This switch here feels a bit spongy, so that's broken. Something's broken. It still works, but it feels weird. Power seats here. When Grant drove it, the seat was taller than I like it, which I thought, actually, uh, getting into this, I thought that the seat was maybe, um, for the Avante version, the seat sits higher or has higher cushioning than the Tour A because they are different seats. I'm sorry, Tour V. But that's not the case. I just lowered the seat and it was fine. These are good, comfortable seats. The Tourer seats have higher bolsters in the sides and are a little bit more sporty, but not really that sporty. Also, the Tourer V has Kevlar in here and a few different things. I believe this thing here is different. Um, you can you get cup holders in here if you want. You can open this if you want, or you can slide the whole thing back or forward. So it's, it's kind of interesting, kind of useless at the same time. It's sort of like a design study that the Toyota engineers did, and they were like, yep, I'll pick this one to put inside the car. I don't know, not really my thing. Uh, the Navi screen here has some degradation in it. Now I'm going to put the key in so that you can see. Everything still lights up properly. But you can see from different angles, it just doesn't look as good. So that screen kind of has to go. But luckily in this one, none of the controls go through the screen. Your AC is down here. AC all works properly. You get a uh, empty space here that's harder to open than it should be. When Grant and I were driving, I could open that. I don't know why it's being a struggle. Has been smoked in. There's one cigarette burn. Where is that? I thought, oh, there it is. Okay, the interior smells like uh, air freshener. Ooh, white face gauges. Very similar to the Celsius or the um, 
LS400. Okay, floor mats are nice and clean, seats are nice and clean, dashboard, all good, other than those glue marks there, I'll show you from inside. Okay, headliner is good. Now, I gotta show you the trunk, because as far as a three box car goes, this trunk is actually pretty big. I'm gonna fit lots of stuff inside there. And it's nice in that it has a big horizontal opening, as well as a decent amount of vertical opening, and so getting your bags in, it's pretty easy. Always love the back end of these with the tail lights. Um, it's a little bit weird to say this is this far into the video, but if you don't know, there are three kind of sister cars of this. There's the Chaser, which this one is. There's the Mark II, which is known to be the sportier of them, but I like the looks of the Chaser better. And then there's the Cresta, which is kind of the grandpa version. And so you can choose what image you wanted. They all have different headlights, tail lights, uh, uh, back fender areas, different uh, steepness of the of the glass, I believe. Um, different trunk for sure. They all look like greenhouse wise, this area. They all look really similar. I believe I read somewhere that they're not. I believe it might just be like doors that are the same, but uh, chassis wise they're the same, engine options are the same, and interiors are all the same. So they're the same car, just with different looks. Slightly different looks. Open up the back here. There's something in here. Ew. Look at that, somebody left the threads. Mm, I love Japanese cars. Seats are good. Nice and clean. Lots of room for your legs. Pull this down, what do we got? Just a pillow? That's okay. Sometimes this gets ruined when they put stuff in it that's hard. This is what your kids need to put, rest their heads on when they're tired, especially when they're little. And you get an ashtray. Ashtray. Oh, and a uh, little clean box. Let me show you that. The Soror, Celsior, and the uh, X90s, X100s, they all have these. And it's a little garbage box. And you can open it, put your garbage in, and then close it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it is cool, and they only exist in Japan. They do take up some of the leg room, which, I don't know, may be negligible. But it is a cool JDM-only kind of thing. So, hope you like that. That is, that is going to be it for this walk around. I'm going to have to edit this into two parts now. So, if you made it this far, give yourself a thumbs up and a pat on the back. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, and have a nice day.